Hey guys, how you doing? It's Hex. Hello. Um, I'm here to talk to you about Halcyon 6 Starbase Commander. Now, when you see a game entitled Halcyon 6 Starbase Commander, you assume there's going to be things like Stellaris, where it's going to be like actually managing fleets and stuff. Um, and this game sort of has that, uh, but it's really hard to describe. It describes itself on the website um, as a retro spray space strategy RPG with base building deep tactical combat, crew management, and emergent storytelling. Um, what that sounds like is a clusterfuck of ideas. Um, and what the game is, is a clusterfuck of ideas implemented really, really well. Um, I shit you not, I had a great time with this game. Um, this game was sent to me uh, by one of the viewers in our stream yesterday, uh, Zoom. Thank you very much for the code, Zoom. Um, and I jumped on it straight away and started playing it. I entitled my initial stream, The First Hour of Halcyon 6. Four hours later... I'm still going, and I'm like, mm, this video is now way too long for YouTube. But if you do want to see that video, in the description below, I've uploaded it as an unlisted YouTube video, and I'll put a, a thing somewhere that lets you click on it. Um, but the whole stream is only available if you know the URL, so you can click on it there. I haven't put it on the main channel, because I don't think many people want to watch six hours of gameplay. But if you're thinking about buying the game, it might give you a much better idea of what it's about, because I literally played for six hours with Twitch chat. Um, so there's that if you want it. Now the game's priced at £14.99, currently on promotion for £12.74. It gets very positive reviews, only 279, uh, 297 reviews, uh, which is a shame because I was hoping the game would get more reviews and that get more traction. It's really good. Um, it seems to be a day one Linux launch. I don't think it launched without Linux. Um, how long has it been out? Let's have a look. Uh, it's 9th of December. So yeah, it would have been a day one. It's only the... It's only the 14th today, so yeah, it would have been a day one Linux release. Um, looks beautiful. They've done a wonderful job uh, of making it pixel, of using pixel art without trying to make it look like an old game. Because too many pixel art games nowadays just look like old games. And that's not what we want out of pixel art. Pixel art can be beautiful and new and interesting. Um, and that's what they've done with this. So uh, the SteamOS requirements, the SteamOS and Linux requirements are Ubuntu Linux, 2 gig of RAM, and some hard drive space. Yeah, it's, again, this is one of the reasons I like pixel art. It does a wonderful job of looking amazing while not being very heavy on your system at all. And we've got this thing here now. This thing here now. This, this the thing. So it's actually got 543 keys uh, to reviews, but only 297 was purchases or something. I don't know how they're doing this now. I'll have to figure that out. Maybe a separate video. 3.8 hours. Uh, thumbs down. Game is great platform for all kinds of amazing content. But featuring expansions down the road. Uh, however, it's just simple and deterministic right now. I don't think it's simple and deterministic right now. I didn't feel that way at all. Maybe that was a little bit earlier of a review. I don't know. Um, 20 hours on record. Thumbs up. Part XCOM. Part JRPG. Part FTL. That's probably a good way to describe it, actually. Uh, going down, we've got 7.7 .7 hours. 15 hours. 6.5 with a down thumb. 3.3. 4.9. So, yeah. People, yeah. people seem to be 10 hours in. That seems to be the theme of this game. Um, I'm four or five hours in uh, and I'm really having a great time with it. So let's flip to the game, shall we? Yay. Uh, here is the game. Let's continue our save game. The list of keyboard controls and the options. Okay, I can, I, can, I can live with that. It's the first time I've actually learned the game. So this is the space map. Uh, the space map uh, shows you everything going. Each one of these is a quest of some sort or an indicator of content. Um, some of these things you go there, just like these ones here, all these ones, in fact, I would just go to collect resources. Like, this produces materials a day, but you have to go and collect them. This produces people, but you have to collect them, materials. This is this is a ruined facility. This is a facility that got destroyed. This is a facility I evacuated. Um, and then this produces uh, dark matter, which is like an energy source. Uh, and then you can choose to send your ship. So by clicking on one of these now, so if I click, click on this one, I can send fleet. Now, I've got, I've got two fleets. Um... Oh, I've got three fleets now, actually. So let's send... Uh, I've got a, I had a uh, new fleet that's just called Fetch. It's just one ship, and all I use it for is just going to collect things, just goes around the galaxy, picking stuff up, then comes back. So let's just launch that. Um, and you'll see, uh, straightforward, it starts travelling towards the destination. You'll see, there you go. No way. Uh, and when it gets there, let's hope no events happen while we're doing this. When it gets there, pop, it comes up with, uh, we found a small ship wrecking space. Oh, that's nice. Let's, let's carry on to the base, though. So I can transfer materials or evacuate the facility. So let's transfer materials. Now the materials are on that ship. Um, and I send the ship home. The ship goes home. And it's only when the ship returns home that the resources are added to my inventory up here. Um, which you should see any second now. Pop. There you go. Materials added. Um, 
the the game relies on crew material and energy and fuel um, essentially to get through everything it needs so the next thing we would do here is we need to send a ship to get fuel so let's send a ship let's send the little one to go get some fuel he'll go there here transfer 25 fuel uh, leave system and then we will have him come back home and that fuel will get added to us there we go, Way. There we go. Um, this is how it works and slowly what we're trying to do is eradicate all the bad stuff out of the galaxy these here are pirate ships which you can fight and um, we have a random alien invasion spawn here um, throughout the galaxy and we have to go and deal with that fairly straight away now in during my first playthrough which again is linked in the description below the video you can see that i made some mistakes uh, there's no visual cues telling you that the aliens are whittling down the health of your stations or there's no like number of turns before you have to deal with it so these aliens popped up here and here and started attacking these bases this one here where it's destroyed and there's one another one somewhere that was destroyed i think it was here i don't know what it's gone oh no down here there we go so I start attacking these and i ignored it because there was no visual cues telling me it's whittling down i thought maybe it just means i can't get resources from it until i clear it and then all of a sudden the base died and i was i was oh, i've just let millions of people die which is not my finest moment um but as i as i looked into it i realized that yep they are whittling down health and you have to and basically you have to deal with threats the moment they pop up otherwise you cause problems um what i was trying to do was faffing around on my station which i'll show you shortly and trying to get my crew complement up um that's meant though that i'm in a place in the game now where i've got a ridiculous amount of resources because i i basically was focusing on that instead of saving lives which was probably not the way to go um so as i said this is sectors owned by different alien races that all have got a lot of personality and come visit you regularly to talk shit at you with daniel view screen um, and this is your main station right here which is at the edge of space you think it'd be in the center but it's not because the federation was in the center but they may or may not have been destroyed and then you have the collective and different zones here now if you destroy the controlling infrastructure of one of these zones uh, like there was a pirate zone the whole way around here but i destroyed the pirate admiral x or something and uh, that took away the circles they no longer own it um which i believe gives me room to expand but i haven't really seen expansion happening in this game yet um i think mostly it's because it's more focused on a story down here in the bottom right you have uh missions uh, which pops up and it tells you all the things you can do and how many days you've got left and then here is notifications which although i suppose the notifications would be great if you kept up with it i just ignored it and now i've got 43 um, which is good because i've got something to show you guys but it, i didn't find it really good because i think the visual management for the most part on the main starbase menu here hello the galaxy menu sorry lets me see when there's things that need dealing with it's quite good even though it doesn't show the health whittling down to give you an idea of time left it does show me where the things are that i have to go and deal with which is nice as i said this is our main station here um which is the thing we're trying to protect now we've got a menu up here on the top left which allows us to see different stuff so we've got the guy the star map sorry we've got the star base this is the station menu and this is essentially this layout essentially represents individual bricks that sort of look like the entire station um, in order to use one of these uh, one of these areas we have to click on it and we have to assign an officer to explore it. I don't currently have officers, which has been part of a bit of a bugbear with the game, actually. But we'll uh, we'll get to that shortly as well. Um, you explore the room, and it takes like nine days. And in those nine days, you might have uh, ground combat you have to do uh, when when you find bugs and stuff to deal with in the starbase, um, or you may have uh, find some treasure, or eventually you'll end up with a clean base you can build rooms in. And that's where all these rooms came from, which was me building facilities. Um, facilities range far and wide uh, i mean down here we've got the ship manager if i add an officer to one of these tasks i can like i can i can upgrade the scrappers so i can add an officer here and 15 days later i'll have an upgraded uh, rogue scrapper which is nice um not something i've been able to do though because even after four hours um i found it very difficult to get this crew complement up i found it difficult to generate officers so even though i've got 142 crew i have a really hard time getting officers so that's the station manager um you start off with just two i think two rooms. you start off with fleet command and ship construction and then anything else you have to sort of build as you go um oh no you start with text research as well and you can click on the rooms and this one literally click on the room it takes you directly to the menu so this is where i research tech there's not loads of tech and i didn't find it particularly challenging to unlock all what i've unlocked but that might have been because i spent two hours 
faffing around in battles because I wasn't dealing with them as they turned up. So it got to the point where I had to just spend literally two hours just constantly battling. But really, guys, you need to deal with them threats when they arrive. Otherwise, you'll be in the same situation I was. That said, left me in a great place the rest of the game, I think, from what I understand. Um, you just click on them. And the, like if I click on this now um, and I click research, it'll be done absolutely instantly. Like research, ticked now. That's, that's now done. And I can tick that and that's now done. Um, so they're instantly done and finished. Um, in fact, that's yeah, that's all of it. I think. Oh no, one more to do, and then I've done the whole lot. Um, not loads, but all the stuff in there seems interesting enough. Didn't have too much of an impact on the actual gameplay as a whole, though, which was a little bit disappointing. Um, and I can't get over the dudes floating around the background that appear to be playing keyboards. Um, which brings us to our next menu. So, so there's anyway, there's the ship there. Our next menu is Starship Management. Starship Management is a lot of fun. Um, I called this guy Dance Party because he has an awesome outfit and haircut and he looks like he's going to go to a nightclub. So I call this ship the Dance Party 1. So it, sometimes it says Dance Party 1 has reached its destination. Dance, <laughs> Dance Party has an event. And you can see here this guy has seen an awful lot of combat. 31 victories. That's how much battling I did last night to get to this point in the game. Um, but again... I think all this battling I did was probably a result of me misunderstanding things in the early game. And when I play it again, and I certainly will be, um, I'll know to look out for that. And I think I'll be doing a lot less battling because I won't be letting it all build up and have a backlog to take care of. This one again, 28 victories. The Hannibal Flyer Zero. This is the one I just used to go around. Uh, the Delta Flyer is the one I just go around grabbing stuff. Now I've named my ship's amusing thing, or at least I, I hope amusing things um, as I was playing uh, because... Frankly, the name to come up with, like, like uh, where's the ship? The Knight. The Knight. It's, yeah, there's no unique names, and I found it easier to name them. So I can see what's happening, which is really nice. And so you can assign, anyway, so if I find a ship here without an officer, I can then click Assign Officer, but I don't really have officers. He's all, she's already on a ship. Um, and then I can, or I can scrap the ship, or I can rename the ship. So I can rename this one to um, Shippy McShipface. There you go, Shippy McShipface. Uh, and then literally I'll assign that and that will then change the dialogue in the things, which is quite nice. Um, next option here is ship construction, which is where I actually get to literally create the ship. So I can go, I want the marksman ship. And um, that's an, a tactical ship, so it needs a tactical officer to man it. Uh, okay, uh, and I want to construct that and that will take three days to do. And literally nothing will happen in three days time. Uh, and when I say days, I mean this ticker at the top goes past you know, one day, another day. Um, that ticks past. When it hits three days, ship appears. No problems. Now, what's interesting about ship cre creation itself is all it costs is crew and energy because it essentially replicates, like Star Trek style replicates the ships or 3D prints them or something. So you don't actually need matter. This material seems to be mostly used for base building stuff on the station, which is fine. Um, it wasn't entirely clear at first. I didn't really track how the materials mattered at first. And another mistake I made early on was where I... Uh, I got here and thought I was safe and evacuated them, not realising by evacuating all the people, I could no longer harvest resources from the zone. Um, so that was something early on. It set me in a good place because it gave me plenty of crew early on, but uh, it wasn't wasn't an ideal decision to make. Next menu here is oh, tech research I've already shown you, uh, and then officer quarters. This is where we can click on our officers if they've got little up arrows down here, and a promotion. A promotion means they have another skill. Some of these are ship skills and some of these are combat skills. Um, it's not really clear which is which. I believe, I personally think there should be two separate trees for ground combat and ship-based combat. Um, I think that would be a lot easier on the eyes. But once you understand it, you've got a good idea of it, you can kind of figure it out. Like, that's a ship skill right there. That's a ship skill. And then this one here is like a ground skill. Um, so, it, as I say, it's not the easiest thing to work out. Both are important, though, uh, because the ship combat and the ground combat are essentially the same thing. You get people on the left, people on the right, and you, you, you fight in a turn-based manner. Um, we, yeah, I'll show you that next. And then there's the main menu here, and in the options menu we have literally pick a resolution, full screen, um, a bloody mess, which I'm not entirely sure, I'm trying to show what to do, I assume it's Gore Factor or something, I don't know. Um, music and sound uh, options, gameplay, I don't know what this does, but it says make the game unstable, um, so I've not clicked it. Uh, and hotkeys, which is again, customizable, but to be honest, I've had no problems with the actual controls. The controls have been quite tight and very easy to get your head around. Not felt the need to do a lot of customize, I uh, do a lot of shortcut keys. It's all very clickable, um, and that's nice. Uh, it's one of the first games in this style that doesn't feel like a mobile port. And um, weirdly, though, I could see it really working on mobile, but um, 
it doesn't feel like it was a mobile game or was intended for mobile. It does very much feel like a PC game, even though a lot of points have been scaled down and simplified, while at the same time keeping the core of what they do. So let's just show you a little fight now. So if I right click here, I can see that there's three there's three individual uh, ships there to fight. Each one is not particularly threatening compared to my fleet. So I'll send my fleet there and I'll send my Twitchers fleet, which is just the fleet I created while I was in the Twitch chat. So let's go. Uh, oh, yeah, important to repair the fleet before you go out. And then zoom and pop and then start combat. Now this is the combat screen. This is the, where I spent the majority of my time through my playthrough. Uh, very satisfying combat, very straightforward to play. Uh, the bad guys are on the right, the good guys are on the left. I've got a retreat button. These are all the individual characters in the combat. Not that it's really relevant, because even without, like, if you cover that up completely, this has still got all the stuff you need visually. So I can now uh, warp atomic structure. This does 41 to 101 damage and inflicts crew panic and hull breach. If I right click on this guy, it says he's vulnerable to propulsion engines. Uh, propulsion and engines down is his vulnerabilities where it's racial. Some, uh, one of the races, the alien squishy KFC monsters, um, they are vulnerable to hull damage specifically, and that just shreds them up. And there's this ability here that hits all enemies. So if I hit all enemies and click here, poof, there you go. That's give all of them a good old smack. Uh, usually it tends their health bar down a tiny bit, but unfortunately these guys are really low powered and these ships have seen a lot of combat and these officers are very good. So uh, we can use the old backstab here, which is Twitch, uh, Twitch chat's favorite ability. It's basically the Picard maneuver. Shreds the ship and out, there you go. Boom, that ship's done. And this, yeah, this, they don't really stand a chance. I mean, these ships are in so much combat at this point. These officers are, they know what they're doing. I'm not entirely sure how the level of the officers actually affects the ship combat, but it's definitely been getting far easier. I mean, I've definitely been hitting harder and doing more damage and really having more of an impact on the battle as my officers have seen more and more combat. So I don't really follow how that works and how you know how it works with evade chances and stuff, but we won that one fairly straightforward, which is how it is with these. Uh, with the other KSC monsters, it's a slog, and each battle I'm like, might die this time. Towards the end yesterday, though, after I got after I'd been doing it for about an hour, I was getting to the point where I got I got my system down and combat had stopped being too much of a chore. Return home. So now I've, I've obviously got to take care of these two uh, in order to make this sector of space safe, and then I've got to go down and investigate down here. There's also quests going on down here, as I said. Um, I've got a yabbling attack. Defeat the yabbling fleet. So if I click this, it should show me. There you go. So I really should be dealing with this as well at this point. Um, so I can click this now and send fleet. And again, I can send the Twitchers again because it's they're the guys that are going to do it already. That's my battle fleet. I really do need to upgrade them, but that's been while I've been like trading water for the last like four hours of this game, fighting instead of instead of actually focusing on upgrades and stuff. So that's a shame. Uh, so with this one, hopefully we'll get oh no cutscene. That's a shame. Um, sometimes when you go into these sort of mission-based ones, you get some moral choices and some very very well-written combat um, information, uh, di combat dialogue and stuff before you start. Uh, so that hit all them. That should take out a couple of them. Oh no, not quite. Yeah, I'm not too concerned. They're hitting me hard, but they have very little health. So I'm not too concerned about this. So yeah, let's uh, let's hit the lowest health one first. That's that one done, taken care of. The game uh, does have a really, really interesting way of sucking you in. And yeah, honestly, yesterday when I tried to play for one hour and played for four, um, I have no doubt that I'll oh, that happen again and again. Um, I don't know how long the game is. As I said, I've, I've, this is sort of I'm, this is into my fourth hour or so. Um, uh, yeah, into my fifth hour or so now at this point. Um, and I don't know how long the game is. I'm more than definitely going to be finishing it though. And I, and I think there's probably replayability, as in even when I finish the main campaign, um, I think I'd like to do it again without making the the the, the early player mistakes uh, that I made. Um, which is which was was not there was not insignificant. I did some some things that as I got to the later game, I realised was really stupid things I did. Um, so I won't be doing that, and maybe I'll have a different gameplay experience. I don't know, but I feel like I'd want to play it again afterwards, um, which is good, I think. So yeah, that, I think I've shown you everything I can show you without just ending up doing another four-hour video. But uh, this has been Halcyon Six, a game that I honestly I think is bloody brilliant. I, I'm very very enamoured with it. Um, it does take you a little bit, it did take me like an hour of first play, it did take me an hour to understand how everything related to each other, and I think the tutorial could be better, 
Um, I don't like this 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 pixely font they use here. I've got quite I've got a 27 inch monitor in front of me, and it, the game is full screen. So when I'm reading when I was reading this font on Twitch chat, full screen in front of me, I actually found it a little bit hard to read. I had to actually back up a little bit to read it because it was it just it's too pixely. I would have preferred a smoother font, um, even though it wouldn't match the aesthetic of the game. It it would have made it a lot easier to read and understand early on. I think. Um, other than that, that's my only real criticism about the game. The fonts are pain in the ass. Uh, and when that's your only criticism about the game, you're picking up on fonts. You, that's that's not a bad thing. I mean, that's a sign of a good game. And this is a really good game. Um, it is locked to 30 frames a second, but it's, strat it's strategic. There's, there's, it really wouldn't benefit from a higher frame rate, in my opinion. And I think the game, honestly, looks lovely. And look, when you start time, it spins. And then you pause time, and it stops. And just how you know whether time's going or not. Isn't that cool? Um, very, some very nice cues. This was a Kickstart game. Uh, which is interesting because I hadn't heard of it till it dropped on Steam, but I'm not, I don't really back Kickstarters because, in my opinion, if you back a Kickstarter, you're not backing a Let's Game, you're backing a Promise, and that's not okay. So, thank you for watching this video, and don't forget you can click below to watch my entire four hour stream if you are so inclined, and it will give you a much better idea of what the early game was like for me because I look like a pro now. Look, these aliens have bloody turned up. These buggers, oh man, these guys stress me out. Um, so thank you very much for watching, and goodbye guys. I'll be back later in the week with hopefully a CSGO video, if all goes to plan. Um, but for now, I haven't recorded it, so it's just an idea, much like Kickstarter. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.